Number 8. Oliver Banfield In the early morning hours of July the 26th of 2020, a mother of two was attacked by a strange man while walking home alone in the West Midlands region of England. The victim identified as 37-year-old Emma Homer later recounted how she'd only been a few doors down from her Warwickshire house when she was suddenly accosted. She described how it seemed like her shadowy assailant was pretending to be a police officer as he allegedly shouted at her to get on the floor now before forcefully pulling her arms behind her back. The man's female companion eventually crossed the road to intervene, pulling him off of a terrified Homer. She reassured the latter that the man was simply drunk, at which point he got back in the victim's face and shouted, why are you following me? The woman pushed him away to which he responded by forcing her back onto the ground, holding her in a headlock and repeatedly kicking her. In the incident's aftermath, Homer reported the assault to Warwickshire police but allegedly had to fight for a reaction from the authorities. The department subsequently apologized for the delay in the commencement of their investigation into the matter. Through the use of CCTV footage, detectives were able to identify Homer's attacker as an off-duty probationary officer named Oliver Banfield. The 25-year-old man had reportedly been quite intoxicated on the night in question and had become convinced that Homer had been stalking him and his partner. In March of 2021, Banfield pleaded guilty to assault by beating and was given a 14-week curfew, during which time he was prohibited from leaving his house between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. He was suspended by the West Midlands Police, but later resigned from his position. Number 7. Emma Bowick Officials with the South Wales Police Force learned that one of their constables had been stalking her ex-boyfriend, Gavin Burrows. Over a period of weeks during October of 2021, the officer in question, 21-year-old Emma Bowick, had only been with the force for a matter of months before she became the subject of an internal investigation. According to subsequent reports, Bowick, a recent graduate of the University of South Wales conducted a course of unwanted contact with Burroughs by repeatedly showing up at his home unannounced, reaching out to him and attending at places where he frequents, including his place of work. Merrick ultimately admitted stalking without fear, alarm or distress during the trial at Quimbran Magistrates Court. She was consequently given a suspended 10-week sentence following an accelerated misconduct hearing the disgraced officer was fired from her position and barred from serving as a public official at any point in the future. Number 6. Wanda Vasquez Wanda Vasquez, the former governor of Puerto Rico, was arrested on August 4th of 2022 for taking part in a bribery scheme while in office. It was subsequently reported that from December of 2019 through June of 2020, Vasquez had engaged in the alleged corruption with several co-conspirators, including a Venezuelan Italian bank owner, a former FBI agent, a bank president, and a political consultant. The scheme revolved around the prominent politician's efforts to finance her 2020 gubernatorial election campaign. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, an international bank owned by Julio Martin Herrera, had been under investigation by Puerto Rico's Commissioner of Financial Institutions in connection to a series of suspicious, unreported transactions. In exchange for providing Vasquez's campaign with financial support, Herrera asked that the governor dismiss the commissioner scrutinizing his institution and appoint a new one of his choosing. Vasquez accepted the bribe and ultimately appointed a former consultant for Herrera's bank as the new financial institutions commissioner in May of 2020. The former governor and her accomplices were each charged with conspiracy, federal programs, bribery and honest services wire fraud, which carry a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison if convicted on all counts. Number 5. Brandon Wilkerson 
An Indiana police officer encountered an unclothed man standing in the open doorway of a pickup truck while patrolling the Evergreen Plaza in Trail Creek in the early hours of August 12th of 2022. The officer approached the vehicle which was reportedly parked in the lot outside Decoy's neighborhood bar and grill, at which point he realized that the individual appeared to have been engaging in intimate relations with a woman. The man later identified as Brandon Wilkerson was detained on charges of public indecency and public intoxication as his blood alcohol content registered at nearly twice the legal limit on a portable breathalyzer test. It subsequently emerged that the 35-year-old suspect was actually a Laporte police officer who'd been off duty at the time of the lascivious public incident. He was automatically suspended five days without pay in connection to his arrest. As of the case's latest updates, the Laporte Police Merit Commission hadn't yet decided whether to hand Wilkerson any additional job-related punishment. Number 4. Nicole Miller Scottish Police Constable Nicole Miller was accused of waging an extended campaign of psychological abuse and coercion against her former girlfriend between April of 2019 and August of 2020. As was detailed during the case's eventual trial in Falkirk Sheriff Court, the 31-year-old officer was alleged to have verbally abused her partner, Rochelle Kerr, even as the couple prepared to welcome their first child, who had reportedly been conceived through in vitro fertilization. During the course of their four-year romantic involvement, Miller would regularly scream, shout and swear at Kerr. The latter described how she'd eventually become withdrawn and felt trapped, controlled and manipulated as a consequence of her partner's abusive behavior. Their relationship had experienced one of its many contentious boiling points when Kerr was still 35 weeks pregnant and had told Miller that she wanted to finish her pregnancy at her mother's house. The manipulative constable took issue with Kerr's decision to leave, however, and proceeded to hide her car key so she couldn't escape. The relationship finally came to an end after the pair had the latest in a seemingly endless series of heated arguments in the late summer of 2020, tearing Kerr away from her recently born son. During the domestic abuse case's court proceedings, Miller vehemently denied her former partner's allegations, tearfully contending that it had actually been Kerr who'd acted as the antagonist of their unstable relationship. Number 3. Leonid Kozara on February the 22nd of 2020, advertising mogul Sergei Staritsky was found dead inside the home of former Ukrainian Foreign Minister Leonid Kozara. The police indicated that 56-year-old Staritsky had suffered a fatal gunshot wound from a firearm belonging to the retired public official. Kozara and his wife, who were both home at the time of the deadly incident, claimed that the victim had inflicted his mortal injuries himself while in a separate room. However, Investigators and prosecutors reviewed the circumstances of the death and concluded that Staritsky couldn't have shot himself. As the Kozaras contended, the National Police used forensic, ballistics and molecular genetic tests to gather enough evidence to formally charge the former foreign minister with Staritsky's murder and he was taken into custody the following month. On the evening of the shooting, the two men had allegedly gotten into a drunken argument in the kitchen that ultimately escalated into a physical fight. The altercation culminated with Kozara retrieving his weapon from the bedroom before returning to gun his friend down. If convicted of his murder charge, Kozara reportedly faced the possibility of spending up to 15 years behind bars. Number 2. Michael Davis in the early hours of June the 23rd of 2021, an Arkansas team was gunned down by a Lanoke County Sheriff's deputy during a traffic stop in the city of Cabot. It later emerged that the victim, 17-year-old Hunter Britton, had been test driving his truck after making repairs on its transmission when the officer, Sergeant Michael Davis, pulled him over near a body shop. A subsequent arrest affidavit detailed how, upon parking his vehicle on the side of the road, Britton got out and moved toward the bed of his truck, which had begun to roll backward toward Davis's patrol car. Believing Britton to have been retrieving a weapon, the officer immediately brandished his service weapon and fired a single round into the young man's neck. 
Davis placed Britain's passenger under arrest while the motorist himself was transported to North Little Rock Hospital, where he ultimately succumbed to his gunshot wound. During the ensuing homicide investigation, detectives learned that Davis's body cam had only been turned on after Britain had been shot. It was determined that when the fatal round was fired, the victim hadn't been reaching for a weapon, as Davis believed, but for a jug of antifreeze, which he'd intended to use to stop the truck from rolling backwards. Although the officer claimed to have given Britain several commands to get back inside his vehicle, the victim's passenger testified that he'd heard no such directives prior to the gunshot. In March of 2022, Davis was found guilty of negligent homicide, but not guilty of manslaughter, and was consequently sentenced to one year in jail plus a thousand dollar fine. Number 1. Hidaki Kumazawa a former top Japanese government official was taken into police custody on June the 1st of 2019 on suspicion of murdering his own son. The 76-year-old suspect, retired agricultural vice minister Hidaki Kumazawa, told investigators that his son, Aikiro, had moved back in with his parents about a month prior to his death. Kumazawa further detailed how the family began regularly having tense arguments with one another following 44-year-old Aikiro's arrival. The latter, who reportedly suffered from a developmental disorder, was accused of physically and verbally abusing his father during the brief period in which they lived together. Kumazawa told the police that on the day of the fatal incident, his son had become enraged at the noise generated by the attendees of an athletic event being held at a nearby elementary school, allegedly concerned that Aikiro might try to cause some sort of harm to him or the others, Kumazawa grabbed hold of a knife and stabbed his son multiple times. The victim ultimately passed away due to massive blood loss. In December of 2019, reportedly taken into account that Kumazawa had suffered previous violent assaults at the hands of the victim, the Tokyo District Court sentenced the former public official to six years behind bars. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be forced to serve as President of the United States for an entire week or have to type a 10-page thesis with baseball gloves on your hands? Let us know in the comments section below.